Good evening. I trust you've had a fruitful day. I do not say happy, though I hope it has been happy. Namo dasa bhagavato harahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo dasa bhagavato harahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo dasa bhagavato harahato samma sambuddhasa. Homage to the Buddha, the blessed noble, and fully self awakened one. <clears throat> so apologies for uh, yesterday evening. The um, the upload was down. That's what happened. Uh, but I'm sure now that you are uh, your habit is well established and that you carried on and uh, continued and did your own uh, meta and compassion, all those uh, reflections at the end of the sitting. <clears throat> I'm sure of it. Uh, uh, before I go into, before I go back to that uh, discourse, um, tomorrow I begin this uh, course for people. Uh, it has uh, a combination of vipassana and a metta, the goodwill, uh, exercises on body care, and Brian Lester will do the um, Reiki. Now, if you want to jot the times, um, I'll try and put them on the front page actually. But the, the times for the um, uh, YouTube are 8 o'clock in the morning, and I'll be doing my usual opening um, process of taking refuge and precepts, standing meditation, sitting meditation. At uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon, uh, I might give, I might, depending on uh, how I moved, I give a small introductory talk, and then we'll sit again. And then at six o'clock in the evening, uh, Brian will be on this same channel um, going through the Reiki. And we're back here at uh, eight o'clock as usual uh, in the evening. OK, the talks will be based around what the uh, retreat is. So the first one is about goodwill. Uh, the second only short talks. Uh, the second one is around the body and the third one bringing your practice into daily life, because that's what uh, that's what we have to do. So that starts tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock, same channel, and uh, same face, me, and uh, that'll be it. I think that's the announcement I have to make, yes. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, we're back on the old... Um, Salayatana Bibanga Sutta, which translates as the exposition of the sixfold sense base. Now, uh, what the Buddha is trying to show us all the time is how we build up the world that we are experiencing. And um, <clears throat> he starts off by pointing out that everything that we experience comes up upon a particular base, a particular uh, consciousness, a moment of consciousness, which remember is a mirror. And it's always coming from the sense bases. So you've got your five basic bases, uh, the five sense bases that we normally associate with um, uh, sense, and the mind base, which uh, records what's coming in from the other five senses, and from the mind heart itself, emotions, uh, moods, imaginings, thoughts. They all must appear on that screen of consciousness. So that moment is called contact. And that's what we went through yesterday, the six internal bases. So the, uh, uh, where are we, where are we? Uh, the six internal bases, are uh, the eye base, so that's the word for it, uh, ear base, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's something that has to appear. So that's your sound base and, and odor base, flavor base, tangible base, and mind object base their emotions, thoughts, and all that. And then there are these six classes of consciousness. When these three comes together, a sense base, an object, and consciousness, then you have what uh, the Buddha calls contact, passa. So that's on your dependent origination. Uh, remember, dependent origination starts off with the body and mind as a separation between the, our physicality and our mentality, psychophysical organism. And then in that organism, there are these six sense bases. 
and because of consciousness we get this contact right now when it came to the contact uh there's the next point where we um where we define what we're actually experiencing as either pleasant unpleasant or simply neutral and here the words used have been translated as joy grief and equanimity this equanimity here just means neutral right it's not it's not the um, virtue of equanimity it's it's basically the same word upeka and so he says that seeing a form with the eye one explores the form productive of joy one explores the form productive of grief one explores the form productive of equanimity so now this exploration remember is vipassana in other words it seeing the process is the process of exploration you're not trying to change anything at this stage because this is all given you uh, as soon as you uh, place your eye on something uh, <clears throat> such now i'm placing my eye on the table that this um, camera is set on uh, I can't stop my eye seeing that table in the way it sees it. So if I'm colorblind, I'll see perhaps uh, a, a different table, a different color from uh, other people. And I can't stop that. And as soon as I see a table, I've already had through all the tables in my life, a relationship with a table. So normally speaking, it's fairly neutral. Uh, but if I see, for instance, a flower, uh, a rose, or something like that then because of my past experience i'll see it as pleasant and the same with unpleasant uh, objects so that's a given right so uh those are remember those are six now <clears throat> having said that um so there are six kinds of ex so there are six sense bases six consciousnesses and when you multiply the six by whether they're pleasant unpleasant or neutral then you get the 18 remember we've got numbers to uh, to explain here huh? uh, and the next one is the 36 positions of beings should be understood now with reference to what was this said there are six kinds of joy based on the household life and six kinds of joy based on the on renunciation now, a household life, uh, really, uh, a more a better translation would be the sensual life, a life based on seeking happiness in the sensual world. Um, he, he, tend, he, he seems to have a downer on the, the householder, um, which he says the household life is dusty. Um, uh, but basically what he's trying to make a distinction between are uh, people who are devoted to trying to find happiness, you know, in the sensual world and those people who are beginning to renounce that sort of desire. That doesn't mean, remember, that you don't keep on enjoying things. It just undermines the indulgence, the dependency on other things, on other people for our happiness. Now, uh, of course, a householder could also be a renunciate, which is, I'm sure, uh, refers to all of you as spiritual athletes. So there are six kinds of uh, grief for the householder life, six kinds of joy, and uh, six kinds of equanimity, all right? So you've got, um, uh, <clears throat> in the householder life, you've got those people who have joy when they experience things, who have, um, well, uh, who, who, and who have, uh, Unple uh, uh, unhappiness when they experience things and who experience a sort of neutral mental state which here is uh, translated by equanimity is a bit is a bit confusing that so you could say in in other words that those who are devoted to the sensual life are just going to keep being reborn and this is what we mean by samsara is driven by the desire to seek happiness in whatever form uh, in the human realm and those who are who are renunciates are, are really trying to escape that to a different level of being so uh, <clears throat> there are six kinds of joy based on the household life right the six kinds are of course based on the six senses when one regards as an acquisition 
the acquisition of forms cognizable by the eye that are wished for, desired, agreeable, gratifying, and associated with worldliness. Now, that's the word I was looking for, actually, worldly. And when one recalls what was formerly acquired, that has passed, ceased, and changed, joy arises. Such joy is called the joy based on the sensual, or as, as he would have it, the household life. Now, <clears throat> one regards as an acquisition, the acquisition of forms cognizable by the eye. Um, that's, a, that's a sort of a, a double take. So in other words, one becomes attached to what one acquires or what one experiences uh, through the eye, the nose, etc. Okay, so there's your attachment. Yeah? And, uh, and then, uh, and of course, we have happy memories too. Huh? So we, we not only enjoy, for instance, a good meal now uh, for the purpose of just, you know, indulging it uh, or just enjoying it. And when we think of all these wonderful meals we've had, holidays we've had, uh, um, romantic affairs we've had, all that sort of stuff, when we think about them, uh, they bring up a happy state of mind, or as he would have it here, joy. <clears throat> And this is true for things that we've heard, things that we've uh, smelt, things that we've tasted, and so on and so forth. And this is called the joy based on the sensual or the household life. Now, what are the six kinds of joy based on renunciation? So this is the spiritual life. When by knowing the impermanence, change, fading away, and cessation of forms, one sees that it actually is with proper wisdom that forms, both formerly and now, are all impermanent, suffering and subject to change, joy arises. Such joy is called the joy of renunciation. Now that at first uh, seems a little bit, um, a bit much, you know, uh, renouncing, renouncing something is supposed to bring us joy. <laughs> but remember, we're not, we're not renouncing the normal joys, the normal enjoyments of life. We're renouncing this attachment. Now, <clears throat> I, uh, for me, the great example is eating. Uh, when we eat, we not only eat to nourish the body, we eat, we eat in order to make ourselves happy often. Huh? Now, that's something that we are, shall we say, becoming dependent on food for. So that's often why we find ourselves taking biscuits and having a bit of cake and doing this and doing that. And it's simply there only to make us feel comforted or happy. But that creates a dependency, a dependency. So, so when, that, uh, when, that, when the coffee's not there and the tea's not there and so forth, there's a, there's a, you know, a feeling of, uh, well, panic. So that's what, and, and that's caused through dependency. That's what we mean by attachment. Now, letting go of that, can be a relief. And um, one thing I uh, try to stress, you know, when I'm teaching is, if you've got a real desire for something, which uh, let, let's take which you which you you know you shouldn't have. So uh, you know, too much food or something. In this case, uh, just stay with that feeling of desire and explore it. By which we mean experience it as a feeling. Desire arises from out of a state of dissatisfaction and is itself a state of dissatisfaction. That's why we want it gratified. Yeah? So it's a case of staying with that feeling of, uh, of the desire of wanting, 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 and really staying with it till it actually completely ends. And when it completely ends, you'll get the, uh, you'll get the present. I think I've said this before with the taints, the oozings. Uh, you'll get, the, you'll get the, the, the present for it. And what it'll be is that sense of release because because these wrong desires are like are like chains around us and once the chain drops off you just you know you feel that sense of liberation that's what we mean by liberation in terms of nibbana is liberating ourselves from wrong desires and then and then joy arises and that's the joy of renunciation try it so then he goes through the uh the six, uh, the, the six bases again, the six senses, uh, each of them uh, by knowing impermanence, change, fading away, the cessation of forms, 
one sees that it actually is the proper wisdom that forms both formerly and now are all impermanent suffering and subject to change. Okay. So then he goes on to the six kinds of grief of the sensual or household right, life. And one regards as a non-acquisition, the non-acquisition of forms cognizable by the eye that are wished for, desired, agreeable, gratifying, and associated with worldliness. But when one recalls what was formerly not acquired, that has passed, ceased, and changed, grief arises. Such grief as this is called the grief based on the household life. Now, again, that sort of double negative is very confusing, you know. When one regards as a non-acquisition, the non-acquisition of forms. So, in other words, uh, when, you, when you don't get what you want. <laughs> so, the non-acquisition of forms, in other words, uh, you wanted to see something like, I don't know, um, the latest movie or something, and, 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 and you couldn't get to it. So, it was denied you. So all, all the all the cinema didn't didn't show it, or, the, or it wasn't on the video, it wasn't on the, uh, on some some platform or other. So this brings about a sense of grief, uh, disappointment, a sense of loss. See, whatever whatever you want, which you can't get, is going to make you frustrated and so on. And uh, then he goes on, of course. Then he, he takes that through the six senses. Now. What are the six kinds of grief based on the renunciation when by knowing the impermanence, change, fading away and cessation of forms, one sees that it actually is with proper wisdom that forms both formerly and now are all impermanent, suffering, subject to change, and one generates a longing for the supreme liberations. Thus, when shall I enter upon and abide in the base so that on uh, the base, you might say the, um, the sphere that the noble ones now enter upon and abide in. In one who generates thus a longing for the supreme liberation, grief arises with that longing as condition. Such grief is called grief based on renunciation. So now, um, having given something up, one longs for something better and that longing is not quite the same as desire is it it's um it's very wholesome it it motivates you to move towards uh what you feel uh you really want um it gives us a sense of urgency um a sense of real commitment to what we want and of course because uh we're not satisfied yet until we become fully liberated. That longing uh, is never entirely fulfilled. So even though it's a great motivation in us to move towards what we really want, uh, which is going to be wholesome and in this case completely liberating from suffering, it is itself a state of um, unsatisfactoriness. And that's one of the griefs. And it's a big word. That is a bit too strong. In it. Well, might not be. Um, for uh, what happens when you start giving up all the indulgences and bring yourself onto the path. And we'll do that when we see that there is a real possibility of an end to all suffering. Yeah? And, you know, when you're sitting and you, and you sit with a desire, for instance, and it really does come to an end, and you sit with something which is, uh, horrible and terrible and it does come to an end you're actually experiencing the fact that things come to an end and and by doing that you uh, and doing it often and realizing that it has an effect on your on your habits that your habits actually do have less and less power to um, uh, to overcome you then you see the, the possibility that in fact there can be an end to suffering don't get, uh, that's not to be confused with um, the ordinary pains of the body. Uh, I mean, that's once you've got a body, you've, you've got pain. That's just the way it is. So that's the, um, 
Uh, that's what happens <clears throat> when you give up. You get this sense of longing for something better. In this case, longing for liberation. And, though, and then, of course, it goes through all the uh, six senses. Here in what are the six kinds of equanimity? So again, uh, I think the word a better thing is, is neutral or indifference based on the household life. On seeing a form with the eye, equanimity arises or neutralness in a foolish, infatuated, ordinary person. Uh, he, <clears throat> he doesn't like ordinary people. Ordinary people infatuated. <laughs> in an untaught, ordinary person, who has not conquered his limitations or conquered the results of karma and who is blind to danger. Such equanimity as this does not transcend the form. That is why it is called equanimity based on the household life. So, uh, uh, <clears throat> so seeing something with the eye, um, which doesn't dis like something which somebody who had a bit of wisdom would be disturbed by and they're, they're not phased. So here we have an untaught ordinary person not conquered by his limitations. So according to the commentary, that means defilements. So he's just not phased by it. somebody, for instance, who might be um, at ease with uh, cruelty, soft cruelty like sarcasm and whatnot. He's not phased when he sees somebody being humiliated. Um, and therefore he's, not, therefore he's blind to the danger of of the anger that such behavior behave, uh, such behavior can cause such equanimity as this does not transcend the form right so it keeps you locked into and so it's true with uh, other things that we hear or feel etc and then of course uh, there's the six senses the six kinds of equanimity based on renunciation when by knowing the impermanence, change, fading away and cessation of forms, right? That's your basic um, approach. <clears throat> knowing the impermanence, change, fading away and cessation of forms, one sees that it actually is with proper wisdom that forms both formerly and now are all impermanent, suffering and subject to change. Equanimity arises. Such equanimity arise, uh, as this transcends the form. That is why it's called equanimity of renunciation. So um, that equanimity is one of, of acceptance, like this is the way it is. So you're not ruffled when things go wrong and we're not incredibly excited when things go right. And that, that's the sort of equanimity that comes when we, are, we understand that things are in a process, that things always change. You can't rely on anything and nothing is reliable. And that brings about a certain attitude to life. Uh, here, equanimity is, is, I think, the right word. Uh, one of that arises from just seeing things as they really are, that sort of acceptance. This is the way it is. So, uh, so it was with reference to this that it was said the 36 positions of beings should be understood. So those are your six senses, which have three affective values, uh, joy, grief, or pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. And that is again split off into two. Those that are associated with the life of, of the senses, seeking happiness in the sensual world is something that you've got to hold on to, creating attachment, dependency. And those that are, are uh, uh, arise because we're, we're letting go of the world as somewhere where we can find permanent happiness or even comfort and seeking it elsewhere. Uh, so I think that, that brings us to the end for this evening, I think. And we'll, we'll stop there, I think. Um, now, tomorrow, because of this course, uh, the short talk will be on, on uh, goodwill. And then on the uh, Saturday evening, uh, it'll be about the body, and then on, uh, hold on, Saturday evening it'll be about, about goodwill, that's tomorrow, Sunday evening about the body, and on Monday, uh, practice in daily life. Okay, so I hope you take advantage of a little bit of extra meditation over the weekend. If you're on your own, uh, then turn it into a little mini retreat for yourself. 
So uh, <clears throat> it's time for us to do a little bit of meditation. Uh, 